I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on complex numbers. In this video, we will re represent the complex numbers on a complex plane. Here is a very interesting example. We need to represent a complex number z to the power of n, where n is equals to minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then we have to interpret the observations as we represent the powers of a complex number. So what we have is a complex plane here. We also call this as Argon diagram. Now, on complex plane, we have a real axis and an imaginary axis. The center will be treated as zero as we see in Cartesian plane. So if you compare with the Cartesian plane, the horizontal axis is the real axis and the vertical axis is representing the imaginary numbers. We'll take an example, let's say, uh, let's say Z. Let's take a pure imaginary number first and then we'll look into its powers, right? Let's say z is equals to, uh, let it be 2i. Okay. So we are taking a pure imaginary number, z equals to 2i. And then we'll see how to represent these powers. So, so z to the power of minus 1 basically means 2i to the power of minus 1, right? And that is, we have 1 over... 2i, correct? Now we can multiply and divide by i. So if I do that, we get i over minus 2i. So what we did was, we multiplied and divide by i, which is negative of half i. Correct? So z to the power of minus 1 can be represented by a point which is minus half of i. So this is one unit. So minus half of i will be the point right there. Is that clear to you? Correct? So that becomes the first point which is minus half of i. Now let's talk about z to the power of 0 which means 2i to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is just 1, and let me represent this by uh, green color. So that will be a real value of 1. Is that clear to you? Now, let's talk about power as 1. So z to the power of 1 will be 2i, right? So 2i, whose magnitude now is 2, right? And this will be represented on the imaginary axis right there. Clear? So you can see that if you join it with the origin, we are actually moving by 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now let's take uh, z square. That means 2i whole square and that means 4i square or negative 4. So this number negative 4 will be represented 1, 2, 3, 4 on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. Is that clear to you? So that is the next position for us. So what do you observe? Observation here is that multiplication by i, we can write down here, by i. That is one thing which we are doing as we multiply, right? Results into what? It is 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. That is one thing. Another thing which you notice here is that the magnitude is, of course it is power of n, 
So every time you're multiplying by the magnitude 2. So in this case, the second observation is that the magnitude is times 2 each time, right? It's half times 2, times 2 and times 2. So the magnitude is magnitude of the original to the power of n, correct? So that is expected. Perfect. So in our case, we are multiplying by 2 each time, right? Which is times 2. Since the magnitude of this complex number is 2. Perfect. And therefore, we did observe that two things happen, and that is one, there is a rotation clockwise, counterclockwise by 90 degrees, and second is that the magnitude power is to be considered. Perfect. Now, keeping this in view, we cannot take some complex numbers, right? General complex numbers. And then see what really happens. So this time, let me take a complex number z. We'll keep it simple. Let's say 1 minus i, right? Let's let this be our complex number. In that case, z to the power of minus 1 will be 1 over 1 minus i. Now, to find real and imaginary parts, we could multiply and divide by its conjugate, which is, uh, I should write 1 plus i, so we'll multiply and divide by 1 plus i. So what we get here is 1 plus i over a square plus b square, right? So it is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So that is equal to half plus half i. Is that clear to you? Okay. So half plus half i z to the power of minus 1 can be represented as a point which is half plus half i right there. Correct? So that is how we are going to represent the very first point which is z to the power of minus 1. Now, what is z? z is given to us as 1 minus i. So 1 minus i can be represented as 1 and then minus i, right? So that becomes 1 minus i, correct? In between, uh, we forgot uh, to the power of 0, right? So let me also write down uh, here z to the power of 0, which is actually 1, correct? So let me write down uh, 1, which is, which is right there. Now, the next point which we are going to consider is z to the power of 2 squared, right? Or 1 minus i whole squared. And that is 1 minus 2i plus i square, or we could write this as 1 minus 2i minus 1. And this is actually equals to minus 2i. So minus 2i will be a point on, so minus 2i will be this point. So what do you notice, right? We can actually continue this process. So what do you notice? So as we observed earlier, our observation is kind of like this. So basically there are two observations. One is, in this particular case, since it is one minus i, we have a clockwise rotation 
90 degrees clockwise rotation right and second the magnitude of z is basically 1 plus 1 right so square square root of 1 plus 1 so which is equal to as we are seeing the magnitude of z is basically equals to a square plus b square square root right which is square root 2 let's write down so magnitude is 1 square plus 1 square which is equals to square root of 2 so what we observe here is that the the powers are square root 2 to the power of n as we move along this particular path right so we'll have a path as shown here each time if you join from the origin then the length from the origin will be square root 2 times the previous position right and it will be rotated by an angle or oh, which is sorry 45 degrees not 90 degrees so in this case it is clockwise rotation by 45 degrees right this is half right this is right in the center so it is a clockwise rotation by 45 degrees yes that makes sense so if you have the complex number z whose magnitude is square root 2 okay, and 1 minus i in that case the powers of n we have a rotation by 45 degrees clockwise and each time the distance from the origin will be square root times 2 the previous number it does make sense to you so that is the kind of observation of which you will see when you are representing z to the power of n i hope that makes sense now we'll actually uh, talk about this more on polar coordinates right so since we are talking about rotation it will be a uh, uh, check video on polar coordinates for angle calculations that would be better actually so at present when we are talking about the complex plane we can kind of estimate this to 45 degrees in this particular case but in general we can accurately find the rotational angles using polar coordinates so that will take up in another part of the video i hope that makes sense so i hope you understood how the powers of a complex number can be represented on a geometric geometrically on a complex plane feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for your time and all the best